It's undisputed, just- unified, <laughs> undisputed, unified. I don't give a fuck. I look at these heavyweights today. Mike would have killed them. Mike would kill me. Mike has speed like Bruce Lee. Hey, we're on safe distance here, and I have my guest here, Tracy Morgan, hometown boy. I love you, Tracy. Good I love you, Mike. What's up, my feet? Looking good, man. Thank you, man. Oh. Yo, man, from the gate Tuesday night, when 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 the show came on, are you? I got them for the season. Yeah, tell me about the ratings. How the ratings go? A launch pad for my show is NCAA baseball. Basketball, all that shut down. So we didn't really have a launch pad. But right. where it's gonna where it's really gonna hit is when it hits Netflix. And you coming back for season four. Awesome. Thank you, friend. I, I, wanna, I wanna give you two episodes. And we already have those. All right, and love. I don't but I'm playing you against character. This ain't gonna be on no funny shit. I need you useful in a different way. I'm I'm with I, wanna, you, man. I sat down and I spoke with you. And you almost made me choke up. I want to show you to America in a different way. In a different way. And the episode is going to be with you in prime time. Okay. When we was in there having a talk, and you was talking to prime, my wheels were turning. That's the episode. That's the first episode, season four. All right. But me and you been there before. A kid trying to come out of Brownsville. Come, we going to film it in Brownsville. All right, man, I'm with you, man. You are his trainer. And the drug dealers in the neighborhood are trying to get at him. So in that episode, it's going to be me, you, Method Man. It's going to be heavy duty. All right, cool. Because you know, when I was little, before you came, Mike, I saw you twice. You was just your man on 42nd Street. And um, he was like, yo, this is my man, Mike Tyson. He's going to be everywhere. And you were just standing there. And the second time... Mark Breland, that's my grandmother's godson. He yeah. brought you to Tompkins because you knew uh, Dead Disco and all of them. The yeah. Bus from, from 919. That's the building my grandmother lived in. You knew Danny Disco and all of them from Brownsville. They yeah. had moved to Tompkins. And they moved to Tompkins. Yeah. And your, your, father, building. your father lived in my building. Yeah, 12, I knew that. 212 Troop Avenue. Yes. Yes, I'm for him. <laughs> Our lives run parallel, and you don't know it. That's why I still feel so connected to you. I listen to you. I listen to you. I followed you. I was little. I was little. And Mark Breland, when he won the when he won the Olympic gold, he came back to Tompkins with it on his neck. And we little kids, we run up and we touch it. And all my life, I said, if Mark could do it, I could do it. And that's why I'm here today, talking to you right now. Man, it's just um it's undisputed, just- unified, undisputed, <laughs> unified. I don't give a fuck. I look at these heavyweights today. Mike would have killed them. Mike would have killed them. Mike has speed like Bruce Lee. Speed <laughs> is power. But I'll never forget what Custer Model said. Cuss said, Mike, when you got him hurt on the ropes, do not get excited. Exactly. I cried so much that I remember when your movie first came out. <laughs> And I saw you at the premiere in L.A. And I cried like a baby in there, man. When you saw my cuss, I said, I love Mike, man. I love Mike, man. Mike is my OG, man. Thank you, brother. It was, it was it was, and I watched Hot Box, too. And I got to come on that show and get down. And you testify. Come, and come, tell my story. Over your arm, brother. Cool. Promise me, man. Promise me, Mike. Uh, on. Trust me. Okay. What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? All right. What's the deal, man? Tell me how this quarantine. What is it really slowing down for you? And well, I gotta say it again, man. I'm here getting my wife pregnant, man. Come on, Mike. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm old school. I don't pull out, kid. I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm. My wife can't get pregnant, but we're practicing a lot. <laughs> Listen, if God wanted, it's gonna happen, kid. I hear you, brother. I hear. You. But you get a lot of practice. That's yeah, we don't want it to happen. We have too many kids. <laughs> Still ain't enough. I'm trying to break Eddie Murphy record, man. Oh, uh, man, that's easy. This guy we got 15, 16 kids, and they're 30 years old. I love it. Yo, yo, Mike, 
You know, this coronavirus is the equalizer. Is the equalizer. It don't matter who you are. We all in the same situation. They finally got us, pimp. I'm on lockdown, man. They got me in solitary confinement, man. The no. government trying to give me money to snitch. They said, we give you $1,200. I said, I want it. it, it I ain't telling stuff. nothing. Being by yourself. Isolation is good for the mind and the soul. Superman needed the fortress of solitude, kid. Absolutely. After he fight crime, he had to fly somewhere and chill. So that's what we're doing. We're just chilling right now. Yo, Mike. Yo, what's Mike. Your, check this out. What, what's your favorite um, quarantine? Why are you quarantined? What do you eat the most? Well, last night my wife made a uh, a big pan of lasagna with six different cheeses. Oh man! So we, I'm killing that. That's gonna last about three days. I love leftover lasagna. That's what it is. I get me a nice plate of lasagna and I go in my office and I watch Wu Tang Clan of Mikes and Men. I've been watching it for a week and a half and yeah, I love I it. Some of it too. I watched some of them when they first started out. You know, Heavy. Rizzo always Heavy. had his vision. He never lost his vision. Yo, you know what I took from it? Today I took, he said, uh, man, woman, is, man, woman, and child purpose in life is evolution. We come out the cave, somebody got on the wall. And the, the generation behind us got to evolve past us. So it's all about evolution. I look at you, how you evolve, you looking at me, how I evolve. We got to keep evolving. That's mm -hmm. the reason why the dinosaurs ain't here no more. Because they ain't evolved quick enough. You got to evolve, man. I don't know. Evolving's good, but some people don't evolve quick enough. No, nah, they don't. That's why the dinosaurs ain't here. So I've been just watching that. But tell me, have you been watching the Tiger King? everybody been watching the Tiger King. You been watching that? I watched it, and it was weird. And by the third episode, I was like, this ain't even about no fucking tigers. This is about no, some other shit. It's this about is psychopathic Joe. motherfuckers, man. Yeah, it's about Joe and his two husbands and his beef with the other lady that killed that they allegedly killed her husband. Yo, it was entertaining. My dude opened his mouth and he had three teeth and two of those was in his pocket. Oh, man, that was really, And what about the woman that got the tiger to rip her arm off and she went back to work the next week? I said, yo, this, this is fucking sick. This is sick. If my fucking house cat hits at me, bitch, you going outside. No, absolutely. But listen, um, can you imagine how their life is like the day that this is all they have to go to? Oh my we god. Always fear bad. God. That tiger yeah. uh, they didn't she didn't even sue. She just went back to work for him. Now you tell yeah, me that's a slave mentality. Yo, that was on some cult shit too. No doubt Dude, about it. That was on some cult shit. Hell yeah. I feel bad for the animals, man. I feel bad for the animals because you know they were mistreated. He was taking the animals out and killing them when really? he had no more use for them. Yeah. That was like on some slave shit. That's what they do. Nigga, you can't pick this much cotton? You got to die, motherfucker. Yeah, we're going to turn your skin into oil and stuff and <laughs> heat the house up. That's what they did. Yo, Mike, can I say something? Yes, please. We sat down, we sat down and rap. You're probably one of the smartest people I ever knew, man, the way you see life, man. I love that shit. You think outside the box like me. I, yeah, I don't know if it's outside the box. I don't know what I think, man. I just think. I wait, no, wait a minute. I watch our box, man. Those are very stimulating conversations you be having. And I notice you listen a lot, too. You listen. You know what? Listen, you know what? Let me explain this to you. You know what I always thought? Because I remember being young. And some idiot from the neighborhood would go to prison and then he'd come out and all of a sudden he thinks he knows something, right? And listen, right? This is what I understand. Check it out. And that guy is an interesting guy because this is what I learned from that guy going through my journey. I realized that he came out of prison, he was an idiot, but he, was, he believed he was teaching. And once he began teaching and he thought he was teaching, he began to learn, learn. And once he began to learn, he never stopped teaching because only by teaching you can learn. Yo, you know what's fucked up? When you don't know how to learn. People have to learn how to learn. It's no. like, as a human beings, we, we forget how to relax. No, it's Because like, life is happening so much. It's what we think of relaxation. Some right. people think relaxation is target practice. Well, With let me tell you something. People, that's relaxation for some people. Some people think charity is relaxation. <laughs> Given is relaxation. We have different perspectives. Right. Right. Um, 
what I was told was contemplation is to reflect on your past. And that's better than praying. Our past is our life, even though they said never look back. If you don't look back, we can't anticipate our future. Right. Future needs to be anticipated, even though if it doesn't turn out the way we anticipated, but it has to be anticipated. We can't, we can't, we can't wing it. We can't wing it in life. We have to anticipate an outcome. You know what, Mike? Whenever I'm around you, I'll say something to trigger you to teach me, because I learn. No, I learn. I'm learning from hearing you. I can't learn unless I have somebody to learn from. Yeah, I but you got way more experience than myself. Me. You know, because an idiot cannot teach an idiot. I have to learn from right. people smarter than me. Well, you know what the deal is? We destroy and then we build. You can't build and destroy. You got to destroy the fallacies in order to build the house. So when I'm with when I'm with the heavyweight championship, undisputed, unified, do a, they do a parade for me in Istanbul, all these things. I try to gain knowledge because I know you got it from Cuss. I still look at Cuss's, his show that he has on, on, on YouTube. Cuss is just wisdom. I forget the name of it, but it's just Cuss talking. And he was teaching you. Imagine that. That's like me learning from Richard Pryor. Yeah. That's why when I'm around Eddie, I listen. And I ask him, and I get inquisitive, because I want to learn from him and Arsenio about this. And then I get on stage. What did Cuss mean when he said, Mike, when you got him hurt, do not get excited? The wound is not dangerous. Some, in some instance, um, some guy, the hitter got boom, the guy is hurt, and then the guy gets excited, he's trying to knock the guy out. He's not concentrating, he's got his head up, and boom, the guy hits him, and he gets knocked out. Whoa. Yeah, once you hurt the guy and he looks like he's sleepy and he, this man is dangerous. We think this man is pussy now, but right now he's the most dangerous he ever he's wounded. Yeah. He's wounded. And that's the same thing like with a woman. You oh, got to be careful. She wounded. She wounded. She'll hurt you. That's why, yo, man, you live and you learn and then you learn some more. I had to learn. No, first you have to learn how to learn, then you can learn how to live. <laughs> you have to learn. True. That's true, man. That's true. I was excited when you wanted me to do the show, man. But I need to come on hot box and kick it. And kick it. I would love to have you there. I need to do it. And they need to see Mike Tyson and Tracy Morgan just kick it. That would be incredible. And know what else? Nobody need to see it more than just two black people who may be famous or celebrities in their eyes. But the fact that we came from the same place. You know things about me that nobody can even dream that I experienced. You knew my father. You I'm not going, yeah. You talked to my father. And I knew right in front of 212 a lot of times. And I'm not going across Mother Gaston. I'm yep. from Bedside, which is well, but you don't want to go to Braun Brownsville. That's not where you want to go. You better know somebody in there and don't be going in there behind no girl, man. Oh, uh, no, the girl's setting you up to come. <laughs> He's setting you up. Setting All them dudes you. I was hanging out on the porch, they go get uh, you when you come out. They're, they're dirty, baby. It's a dirty world, huh? That's Brownville. Yo, come on, man. We both went boosting, kid. Absolutely. They said you was a strong guy. You hit every gap in Midtown. You was a strong guy. You hit him with the dead arm. They said you had the dead arm, kid. I'm a monk and all those guys. Back in I'm the a little monk, one arm monk. Yeah. Monk, Dementio, all these guys. Oh, man. We had such, so much fun. Thing with Demencio in DC, uh, and I know uh, rap and all of them from Four Green. I was up in Tompkins with K Son, you know what I'm saying? So we grew up, people don't realize where we grew up and we made it out. Yeah, that's the whole thing that we're not, not dealing with. Sometimes, one time I lost the well, I lost the Buster Douglas, right? And I was and I was crying, and Milton Burrow saw me. He said, uh, he said something to the effect, Was it Milton Burrow or was it, it was one of them? One of the old Jewish guys that's probably was 100 years old one day, or George Burns, one of them, he said, you did, I said, man, I failed. He said, you didn't fail. You just won $30 million. You fail when you have to go back to Brownsville. <laughs> I said, bro. You, gotta, you fail when you go back to Tompkins, kid. Yeah. No, we don't lose. We learn. Oh, yeah. Win or learn. Win or learn. You learn every day, man. Yeah, don't lose. Don't lose. Yo, Mike, you got hit hard in the ring. 
I get hard. I got hit hard on the turnpike. Eighteen yeah, wheeler, man. Tracy, we get hard and hit hard in life, man. In life, you know, you know I told hard. my wife that the other day. I said life got teeth. I said life got teeth in the bite. Look, hard. the corona. Hard. It, there's life. You got to live it one day at a time. I woke up this morning. I lifted my shades up. I said, the sun is up. It might be cloudy, but it's up. So now he gave me one more day. I'm going to get on the joint with Mike Tyson. I'm living my life, man. I'm praying for those, those who are in dire circumstances and loved ones being lost. I know it's real. I know it's real. And the, the, the people on the front line, the, the nurses and the doctors is around and stuff. Me and you ain't around it. We safely in our homes. There's people working around and stuff. Like, it's like a fireman. While we running out the burning house, Mike, they running in. That's heavy duty. Well, that's why the universe made those people. He made those people just for that. He made yeah, them just for this. Yo, Mike, man. We're all designed for what we do. Yeah, man. I do stand up. So I, I try to be funny so people can forget about this stuff for a minute. For a minute, just for a minute. That's gonna be our way into heaven. When we put ourselves in service to others. You know, I don't do comedy for me. I do comedy because I don't know who out there in the audience ready to go home and burn their family up in the house. Yo, give me that knife, man. Laugh at my problems, man. You ain't the only one with problems. Laugh at mine. Oh, no, no, I'm one of those guys. That would make you laugh, man. You no. know how I know those guys very well. I know I'm one of those guys. Yo, Mike, man, you was on. We had a bunch of fun, and we're gonna have a bunch of fun next season too. Absolutely, it's never gonna stop. Listen, never. Nah, it's never gonna stop. Yo, what you think about my man Prime Time? Excuse me. Remember Prime Time? Yeah. He's a uh, yo, Chris Colbert. You was talking to him. He's super featherweight champion of the world. Super February, 130 pounds. You was talking to him when we was at the show. Yeah, he wants to, um, he gonna, he's going to fight. I remember the young brother. He wants, he's going to fight um, Dante Davis. He wants to fight him. Tank, Tank right? And Lomachenko. Yeah. yeah, I remember talking to him. He was talking I don't know. I don't fighting. know, man. I he said, get some more fight. Right people. You know, guys like that need the right people in their corner. They're not going to abuse them because he's very talented. And I they think he's what helped him. He's a great fighter, but nobody heard about him. You know, he should be out right. there with Tank Davis and those guys. He needs to be able to affirm that, put him out there. You putting him on your show and, and then going to the gym, seeing them work out, will put him on the mat. And I'm going to put him, you're going to be his manager. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about fighting uh, Lomachenko and Dante and Devon. No, 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 no. Guys. Mike, 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 he, has, he's, he, has, he wants to go the wrong route. He wants to go the wrong route. You got to steer him in the right route in that episode. And listen, instruct me and I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Absolutely. Because he got an opportunity to take care of his family, but he won't go sell drugs. Absolutely. This is not for real, though. This is just... This is going to be on the show. Because yes, me and you know the story. Yes. Me and you know the story. I know the greatest fight in the world is not the champion. The greatest fight in the world got killed. The greatest fight in the world wow, is not the champ. I need all of that. We got to write all of that. What you going to be saying to him? This is going to be Cuss talking to you in the dark, in the room. I'm telling you, I see the vision. I see the vision. Vision, I'm going to follow it, brother. I'm you going to get an Emmy behind this one. Well. You, you going to get an Emmy behind this one. I'm going to follow your instructions. Is that the you always, We you always see you in a funny, I want to I show you in this. I want to show you in a different light. I want to make you very uncomfortable. That's going to be my job. Difficult. That's going to be very difficult. I wouldn't be uncomfortable taking a shit in Madison, Madison Square Garden in front of 22,000 people. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm getting ready to go eat me some lasagna, man. All right. Love, brother. Love, Mike. Love. Peace, brother. Thank you.